Um, so essentially what anxiety, anxious thinking is, is doing is saying, I don't like what's going on and I want it to change. I want it to be different than it is right now. Why is this important? Well, we all have limited attention. We can only pay attention to a few things at one time. If we're paying attention to all of this internal stuff, we're not paying attention to what's going on around us. The attention is biased. So anxious thinking is using up a huge amount of our attentional resources. Now, cognitive therapy has some kind of paradoxical messages. Explicitly, it says we focus on the content of the thoughts. We do automatic thought worksheets. We analyze how a thought is distorted. And the explicit message is that thoughts can and should be changed, and that by changing the thoughts reduces the anxiety, right? So this is kind of the teaching of cognitive therapy. But implicitly, there may be a completely separate message. The implicit message is looking at the thoughts over and over again as just thoughts. The Socratic process of questioning the thoughts without judgment, accepting the thoughts without judgment, looking at the thoughts in the present moment. Notice how this is starting to sound like mindfulness, where there's the focus through repetition of looking at the thoughts and filling out automatic thought worksheets is focusing on the process of thinking. Thoughts become events in the mind. We call that decentering, that ability to experience one's own thoughts as simply internal events. And in mindfulness, this changes how we relate to our own thoughts, how the child relates to her own thoughts. And this is what we believe is reducing the anxiety, is the, is the process of decentering. So looking at our definition again, mindfulness produces a kind of a radical acceptance. We just keep looking over and over without judging. It's an observing and noting process. As we do this, we accept without judgment all this internal stuff going on and all of the external stuff going on. We stop pushing it away. We stop creating the suffering that arises from pushing away what is reality. Generally, when we get into a punching match with mother reality, who wins? You know, you can't really punch reality in the nose. Now, it's important because in English, I think uh, the word acceptance is so um, conflated with passivity, right? Acceptance doesn't mean non-doing. You can be very active more so even by accepting what the situation actually is. And a clear example is somebody like the Dalai Lama's work to free Tibet. He's completely accepting of what the situation is and he's working towards change. But in order to work towards change, you really have to see what's there first. <laughs> 